Hello colleagues of ECI 834 and welcome to my summary of learning. The past 12 weeks have allowed me to delve deeper into the expansive world of online and blended learning, examine theories and practices surrounding ed tech, and offered an opportunity to engage with classmates in authentic ways. Please join me as I spend some time reflecting on my learning journey. In his work, Teaching in a Digital Age, Tony Bates suggests that the role of technology in education dates back 2,500 years. However, as he notes, it was not until the early 2000s when MIT began recording lectures and YouTube entered the public sphere that educators began to acknowledge the opportunities of digital platforms. As such, it is important to remember that online and blended learning remains a new frontier in education. It is an area in which educators steadfastly experiment and refine methods of delivery. More recently, as facilitated by global events, publicly funded education has required teachers to deliver education online in inclusive, safe, and authentic learning spaces that offer students rich learning opportunities. However, this, op this need is necessitated by a complex series of considerations that require educators to be thoughtful in the manner in which they deliver instruction. Online and blended learning is not merely putting work online. Alternatively, it is about creating space where students feel engaged and a sense of community. We must begin by identifying the vast spectrum of modalities that encompass the technology-based learning. Encompass the technology-based learning. Bates succinctly outlines this in a continuum that ranges from strictly face-to-face -to, -face to fully online. Furthermore, he offers a definition of blended learning that situates practices such as classroom aids, flipped, and hybrid somewhere in the middle. Consequently, blended learning combines the elements of traditional face-to-face -face instruction with online interactive space. The method of delivery is further compartmentalized when considering whether the course is synchronous or asynchronous. In her article, The Landscapes of Merging Modalities, early ed tech adopter Valerie Irvine discusses the growing number of terms that evolved. More specifically, her early work built upon previous ideas and further expanded the realm of course delivery options by adding multi-access. Multi-access, when done correctly, meets learners where they are at by allowing them choice in the, their delivery method, either in person or online. Having considered the implications of all delivery methods, I chose to make my Wellness 10 course prototype blended asynchronous. Perhaps one of the most important decisions in the realm of technology-based learning is choosing the learning management system that best suits the needs of your learners. As EdTech has grown, so has the need for immersive online learning environments. I explored LMSs such as Canvas, Moodle, and Brightspace, and ultimately I settled on Google Classroom as my delivery platform. While every platform has its benefits and drawbacks, Google Classroom is the most accessible when I consider the needs of my students and the ease of use. Once I selected my LMS, it was important to make considerations such as target audience, accessibility and connectivity concerns, and cultural considerations that exist in my class demographic. I created a learning space that was designed to be user-friendly, accessible, and driven by student engagement. In considering some of these parameters, I would allow students to be granted access to school laptops that could be signed out through the school library. Students may also use personal devices to complete modules and assignments. 
If students do not have access to a stable internet connection, they will be granted permission during class time to complete modules. Students are encouraged to complete summative assessments outside of class time. This may mean working on assignments at home or during other periods of the day. So in considering accessibility and considering engagement, one of the big things for me in developing my course prototype was allowing students flexibility in their learning. Similarly, the manner in which this course brought colleagues together to form a community was immensely beneficial in enhancing my learning. This course modeled the practices of good classroom environments and created a community of active and engaged students. Blended learning is an amazing opportunity for students to explore, discuss, and create collaboratively. Through my planning and realized in my course profile, I took tools discussed in class, such as Flipgrid and Google Chat, to enhance the learning experience. Something I am exceptionally grateful for was the opportunity to engage with classmates through weekly blogging. The blog posts allowed me an opportunity to collate my thoughts and ideas while receiving and offering feedback. The feedback received helped me consider ideas from multiple perspectives and modeled the benefits of online collaboration. Furthermore, the feedback was insightful and helped me deliver my course modules in a more succinct, and manageable way. In summary, ECNI 834 was an immensely rich course in that it provided a lens through which to contemplate the very real issues that challenge 21st century teachers and their learners. Online learning spaces designed to meet the needs of students must be rich in meaningful learning opportunities, driven by collaboration, lively in community, and accessible regardless of learning barriers. I want to thank everyone for their feedback, willingness to share and discuss ideas, and the support shared throughout. I appreciate you taking the time to share in my learning journey. All the best.